What's up everybody, do right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Zero Hour because they just released another update. This one is called Operation Magna. Magna? I'm not really sure how you say that, but what Zero Hour's Operation Magna consists of is a lot of overhauls, two new maps, several new features, and bug fixes. This update primarily focuses on the quality of sound and gameplay. Alright, I know that there's been a lot of people that have been complaining about the sound for uh, this game, saying how some of the guns don't sound realistic, sound a bit cartoony, and there's been quite a few people that have said that they might have actually borrowed some of the sounds from other games. That's a big no-no. So yeah, definitely need to fix that, if it's true. But either way, we're still gonna get better sound, so you know. Anyways, part of so many lives. Hello everyone. We really want to thank the community and appreciate all the love and support you keep giving us. We understand we are a part of a lot of people's lives and we appreciate that more than anything and nevertheless plan to keep delivering. Zero Hour has recently reached above 2,000 players, which is actually pretty good if you're looking at an indie game that's tactical. Like you take a risk when you're in a niche market and somehow they came out on top. I remember that there was a lot of people who were making fun of this game calling it zero players because at one point it hardly had anybody actually playing the game but after all the marketing from all the youtubers and i'm not really sure if they did any marketing on their end aside from posting like trailers and stuff but you know that really helped them out like nobody thought that a rinky dink game from bangladesh that's like ten to six dollars would actually get anywhere but once they dropped that animation update it's like whoa we actually have a game here and at a really good price but anyways getting back to the uh update here and for that we are so grateful thank you for being supportive in our direction for the game we have more content on the way once again we really appreciate the love and support we're getting from zero hour and we certainly can't thank the community enough the community has brought so much joy in developing the game further so we will always be motivated to bring zero hour to the level where everyone will be able to undergo an ultimate swat experience zero hour dev team so that was a nice little note there i thought i'd give a little backstory there because yeah this game was definitely made fun of because I mean, it's not the best looking game it's not a game that's like freaking rainbow six siege where there's like you know a bunch of gadgets and shit like it's like a old school type of thing where you're just going in and killing people you know at least when it comes to the multiplayer the PvE resembles Swap 4 just a little bit, but you know, still needs a lot of work. But at least they're pretty Johnny on the spot with these freaking updates. So, uh, yeah. Let's get into the next thing here. It says they've got two new maps. We are working on two new maps to bring with Operation Megna, Ferry Launch, and Abandoned Hospital. Both maps will be available as PvP and co-op experiences. Okay. Uh, it actually shows a date there. It says August 2021 is when they want to actually drop this. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this means that they want to drop the map in August or if they want to drop the whole whole freaking operation which i'm assuming is just the whole operation but uh yeah look at this right here looks like we're gonna be getting on a boat seems like we have to hop on a rubber boat and infiltrate it through the sea here or a helicopter because i actually see some dudes that are on top of the boat there rappelling down on the side here so that's neat this is obviously a proof of concept here even underneath the picture it says please note the picture shown is conceptual and will not be the final product of the map yeah so this is what it's going to look like and oh my god that's a ridiculous amount of corridors but underneath that picture it says a ferry launch is a mode of water transport popularly used in Bangladesh. The ferry launched by the name of MV Megna has been rigged with the bomb by the terrorist organization wrecking havoc. While the vessel was on its way to Aknapur? I'm not sure if that's how you say that. Someone reported the ferry launch has been hijacked. As there was no other approach, the MS unit was instructed to take on the operation in the middle of the river. Megna. Wait, so I'm a bit confused here. Is Megna the name of the river? Or is it the name of the boat? I'm assuming it's the river. If a developer could let me know down below, that would be very nice. Because I am not familiar with this location, nor am I familiar with this situation but anyways the next one is an abandoned hospital which if you look at the picture it doesn't look like a freaking hospital to me this looks like a freaking outpost for uh, a bunch of pirates which i'm sure that's exactly what it is please note the picture shown is conceptual and will not be in the final product of the map okay underneath that it says a viral video released by a terrorist group shook the nation on july 3rd where it showed the terrorists had the ambassador of the asian embassy abducted two days ago is this real life i'm assuming it's real life i mean where else would they get this right the terrorists wanted their philosophical leader ahmed Al Zoro? Zori? Zuri, sorry for butchering these names, captured in Paradise City, which I think Paradise City is the map that they added last time, I think. The one that I'm currently showing in the video right now. But anyways, to be released from jail in exchange of the ambassador's life, the intelligence unit used the IP address associated with the video to track down the location. Turned out to be an abandoned hospital near Tangale. The MS unit was instructed to take on the operation. A lot was at stake as the demise of the ambassador may change the geological scene of the region for good. When the MS unit went in, 
in, the Prime Minister along with her national security team were in a situation room, receiving live updates from Operation Night Owl. Okay, so is that the name of the operation? So th I'm assuming that this is real life, and they're just doing it based off of that. That's interesting. Can't wait to try that out. But we're moving on from that. Apparently in this next update, there's going to be four new weapons. A lot of content is to be expected with Operation Magna, updated specifically in regards to weapons. To improve our pool of weapons and their accuracy to real life usage, we are working to add four new weapons. The Sawed Off T-Side, which I'm assuming is a shotgun, right? The AS Val, the PP-19 Bison, and 5.7. We will also be switching the MP7 to the CT side and Uzi to be available exclusively with the T side, while Glock will be available on both sides. I'm not sure what that CT said. Is, is that the counter-terrorist, I'm assuming? Well, that's interesting to say the least. It looks like they got a couple of pictures of the AS Val. It looks like there's different versions of it, because it looks like they took off the backboard here. So that's interesting. Why would they do that? Backboard for the good guys? No backboard for the bad guys, maybe? Progress on the AS Val so far by one of our weapon artists. Okay. Alright, well, uh, that's pretty cool. Alright, so they're going to be adding more attachments. I'm trying to see what exactly is new here. Is it that we can add way more attachments? Well, I'm not entirely sure what they added here, so let's see if it says underneath. We have plans to increase the range of attachments available for every weapon. We have recently just added the pressure pad option in the internal testing build as shown in the GIF, with which players can assign auto toggle for IR laser sights and flashlights. We plan to also add grips and stocks as available options for some of the weapons. Okay, neat. Pretty nice. It's always good to have more attachments, you know, because we're freaking gun nuts, I guess. Underneath this, it says correcting realism aspects. I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to be looking at with this. I guess if you have your freaking, uh, you're in the aiming position, you have to put down your, your night vision, and then you have to, like, pull your gun away from your face so that the night vision goggles don't hit your weapon. I'm assuming that's what that is, right? Let's see what it says underneath. We are reworking some of the things to further bring the realistic aspects to the attachments. The closest thing to note will be being able to see the IR insight point without MVGs equipped. Ah, I see. That's what this clip is all about. Damn, was I off. This will no longer be available with Night Operation Magna, and you will only be able to see the IR laser when MVGs are equipped. However, there will also be options to use a normal laser sights to be able to see without MVGs equipped. Okay, yeah, so even when you had freaking IR laser sights on, you could still see the blue light without the MVGs on. I remember that. So glad that they're fixing that. So that was that. Let's get into the next thing here. So Sounds overhaul and finalization. We are aware that the sound is one of the aspects of the game we fall weak with zero hour. This time with Operation Magna, we are focusing on overhauling the weapon sounds and how they work. Having different states of shooting, SFX, and having them work together to compose the sound based on locations, single fire, multiple fire, tail fire, note the current live version only has one single fire above and below, SFX per weapon, that plays with each bullets fired. Apart from adding those states, we are also adding distant variations and indoor outdoor variations to further enhance the way that each weapon sounds based on the surrounding area. We also have plans to add material based footsteps in this update. Okay, thank god. I feel like footsteps are like hardly ever heard in this game. And uh, yeah, um, I think I remember talking to the developer and him saying that the reason why the sounds aren't good in this game is because Bangladesh doesn't have like actual weapons, like they don't have like a shooting range that they could go to or something. So that means that they're probably gonna have to outsource this to somebody. At least that's what I remember from saying. This was a while ago though so i have no idea what their plans are now but hopefully you know it sounds a lot better than what we have now i mean i think the gun sounds aren't bad but they're you know they could be better but anyways this time around we are working together with professionals to add further quality improvements to each sfx more information on this will be revealed with a later deadline oh, okay fair enough all right moving on to the next thing here it says co-op cutscenes and voices we plan to make the co-op experience more premium and exciting so with the help of cutscenes we aim to bring the players closer to the situation at hand the cutscenes will further explain the objectives and will work as briefing to make players understand what's at stake. We also plan on retaking all voice lines by professionals and adding voice commands in the game for people without mics. That would actually be pretty neat because I didn't actually talk about this because I never made a video on it, but in the recent 9 to 5 beta, I noticed that in order to make you understand what you're supposed to do is they literally just told you. Like as the cutscene was going on, they just said, you're supposed to do this. You as the player have to do that. And I'm like, oh, okay, well now I know. They're basically doing the same thing and that's pretty cool and when they say voice commands here do they mean like the ones that they have in crown branch where you select something and then he says yes i'll do that all right okay i mean if they need a voice actor you know they could, they could call me up be like hey uh, i don't mind doing voice acting on me i mean you already got my watch in there you might as well put my voice in there too shit <laughs> but anyways the cutscenes will play while you're loading in the map with a short narrator accompanying it with players we'll be able to skip if they want to okay good because i feel like it's gonna get annoying if we keep freaking failing we have to reload the 
damn thing over again. But anyways, the removal of the kill feed. Not sure I agree with this one, but we'll see. Complain to remove the kill feed and make it more interactive, similar to the SWAT games where you had to press a button to get close to the affected suspect to report talk. After doing so, your team will be notified about you killing someone. This will probably make combat more intense, but not knowing if a suspect is dead, it adds on to the experience. I, I don't know, because I would prefer to know if, like, you know, somebody's, like, dead or not. Like, if I'm still even looking for someone that's not even there. I don't know how to feel about that one, but you tell me down below. Up next, we got the ability to shoot out lights. Ah. You know, I was actually complaining about this. I was like, how come we not able to shoot out lights, right? Anyways, this is a highly requested feature, and we finally have plans to have it in the game. Shooting out lights will play a big impact on how the game is played, and will add to the whole new dynamic to each playthrough. To keep things, shooting out lights will not be made as effective as cutting power out, meaning if all the lights in the room are shot out, it will be dark. However, it won't be as dark as it could be when they have full power out. Okay, I mean, I guess it's fair, but at the same time, it's like, you know, the defenders, they don't have freaking night vision goggles, so it's a bitch to see anybody. But then again, you know, they have the flare and uh, flashlights, so I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that, but I guess it's cool that you can shoot out lights now, finally. The feature is still a work in progress, and more will be announced soon in later dub logs. Okay, fair enough. Let's move on to the next one here. It says, addition of an inventory system. Ooh. Taking weapons from players at the moment is a pretty basic system, and only allow you to pick up the primary weapon from another player. With the addition of the whole new inventory system, we are trying to give players the control over how they want to deal with situations as such. Letting you take either of the primary or secondary weapons along with possible utilities, this also has the possibility to change the dynamic of the round depending on how well equipped you remain. This will also fix the involuntary weapon pickups when interacting with other objects such as doors. The inventory system will also have the feature to transfer ammo from one magazine to another compatible magazine, allowing you to refill unfinished mags? Yo! What is this, Escape from Tarkov? You know, I had an issue with the most recent map that they dropped is that I kept freaking running out of ammo. And I'm just like, shit, what am I supposed to do? Well, now I'll be able to like go up to like an asshole that I killed and pick up his mag, right? That's how it's gonna work in PvE, right? I hope. The following show is still a conceptual look and may change before the Operation Magna update. I mean, that would definitely be cool because I just want to like be able to have ammo, you know, when I go through those maps because I ran out of ammo during the other one. But anyways, the next thing says, limiting weapons and utilities in both sides. Resource management is also getting a rework and will be made that both weapons and utilities are limited resources for both sides in order to balance the upcoming weapons and utilities. What do you mean by that? As in like, are you gonna do what freaking due process tried to do? Or like, if somebody takes in a weapon, like they keep that weapon until they die and then they lose the weapon and they go to like a standard weapon? Like, is that what you mean? Because that's what due process tried to do. And I mean, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I feel like that would like severely change the game, you know? I mean, I guess it would make sense because they already made it so that if the defenders pick up their weapons they can keep that weapon so i mean hmm i feel like this is something that's like really going to change the game so i don't think that this should be like a core thing it should be like a separate game mode at least in my opinion so that way you have the old version of zero hour play and then you have this new version that's very similar to due process but then again you'd be splitting the player base so i don't know i feel like there's gonna be a lot of people that don't like that mode but uh, i guess we'll see interesting idea moving on to the next thing here it says ai improvements and more there are a lot of features still missing from the suspect ai in terms of their behaviors and reactions along with already promised features such as planning on a table or interacting with the environment still not in yet we have plans to add and improve even further with animations our character artist is working with the hostage models and civilian models for future civilian AIs roaming the map along with the hostage getting their own unique models we are also working on making animations for them individually to add to their various personalities and then it shows a picture of a bad guy walking around the animation looks pretty good and then it shows this person that's you know on the floor i'm assuming she has tape on her mouth and her you know stuff is tied underneath it it says work in progress clips from the third person animators okay cool i kind of wish that they would actually add in like a thing for the bad guys where you could just like tie down the hostage so it doesn't fucking run away because that gets really annoying i feel like the hostage tries to run like way too much like even when i'm in the room like they need to do something with that but uh yeah so that is the end here of this very big update and wow how long is this recording? Almost 30 minutes long. Gotta edit this down. All right. Well, I'm gonna get the hell up out of here. What are your guys' thoughts on this update? I definitely think that this is a step in the right direction, but you let me know, right? Zero Hour has definitely been coming out with a bunch of bangers in the same year, surprisingly. Hopefully, it's not clunky when it comes out. Let me know what you think down below, because I'm gonna end it here. If you enjoy the fact that I cover games like Zero Hour, then be sure to like the video, share the video, comment down below. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. You never know, you might find something that you like on the channel. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon. Just 
send two bucks a month. It really helps. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch. And I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.